Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. Certainly doesn't get any easier for Wisconsin going into the horseshoe playing the Buckeyes. How do you think they'll respond after what they had to deal with emotionally last Saturday? You know, in talking with the players, as we both have, and you hear coaches say this all the time, players, young players tend to bounce back maybe faster than the adults <laughs> do. Uh, and I, I think just given our small sample size, talking with some of the guys, here this week, uh, they're they're eager. Uh, they all want to get back on the field. They all, you know, the sooner you play a game, the sooner you can erase at least a good chunk of that bad memory from last week. Brett made a good point. He made it to his players. That it's going to hurt. You want to hurt. You want it to hurt for a while. But then on Tuesday, you want to think about Ohio State, and that's what they've tried to do. And, and they better because Ohio State, with with Wisconsin's loss, I think that the feeling in Columbus is there's life. Uh, they need a little help. Uh, but they look like they're back in the race, or that's their feeling that they're back in this race, even though Ohio State's lost two games in conference. There are a lot of folks who wonder whether Penn State can keep going the way it has. So this thing is very much alive with divisional play, and that's where the good news for Wisconsin is it, it really comes in here because Wisconsin doesn't need anybody's help. Badgers take care of their business, and, and they're okay. For people who are still trying to get a read on what divisional play is or what it means, think about baseball and equivalent maybe of a wild card because it keeps everybody alive longer. It really does. Uh, and you know, where last year when Wisconsin lost at East Lansing, the Badgers needed help. Somebody had to beat Michigan State along the way, and it did. Uh, Iowa, big time. Iowa beat Michigan State. Now, now that doesn't matter. In fact, there's a part of me that would like to see Michigan State keep winning, have Wisconsin keep winning, obviously, get your rematch. A long way to go to get there, but it's worth rooting for. I know one of your concerns for Wisconsin is physically, how will the Badgers match up with an Ohio State team that's coming off a bye? Yeah, coming off a bye, and I still think is a pretty good defensive team. Now, the last six years, Ohio State's been in the top five or six in points allowed per game. It isn't quite that good, but it's close. It's 12th nationally in points allowed per game. Uh, the defense is really what carries the day for Ohio State. The offense still trying to find itself. Braxton Miller, though, a very athletically gifted quarterback. They threw all of four times, completing one pass in the game against Illinois. And Barry Alvarez had nothing yeah. to do with that game plan. <laughs> exactly. I think he Let's might have been that smiling. Put yeah, well, he was happy with yeah, it. People are saying, Woody Hayes is smiling. <laughs> uh, who cares? Yeah. I'm sure Barry Alvarez is smiling a little bit watching that. But they're still they're very physical. They're going to come after the quarterback, I'm sure. I think Brett Bielema is expecting Ohio State to, to try to do that. And, and they're going to run it, especially with Dan Heron back for Ohio State. Very gifted running back. Had his first game against Illinois, first game this season against Illinois a couple weeks ago and played very well. This really sounds like a smash mouth type of game between a, a, a Wisconsin team that's prided itself on it but has probably gotten more balanced over the last few years and Ohio State teams going in the opposite direction and now trying to be more one dimensional. It, it is kind of funny because how many years have we heard Wisconsin? Well, there's passing games. That's the sport back X number of years. Well, now you can kind of turn that around because obviously Wisconsin's very balanced and Mike, you have to, you know, as, as lousy as the ending was last week for Badger fans, you really had to feel good about how the offense played against the second-ranked defense in the country, especially when the Badgers were up against it. Down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, Russell Wilson brings him back, runs for one score, leads him uh, the, the short touchdown pass to Monty Ball for the second. Uh, that, I, I think, in the really big picture is very encouraging despite, on that, despite the last play. Now, we all know what Russell Wilson can do. The unknown, maybe not only for us, but for some people in Columbus, is how good is Braxton Miller? Yeah, and I think a long way to go in terms of the passing. You look at the, the passing numbers are not very good, but in fairness to him, there's a young wide receiving core. Now, their, their tight end, Stoneburner, is very, very good. Jake Stoneburner, he's been very, very productive in his, his time at Ohio State, but they have a lot of young wideouts, and I think for Ohio State, this is where on the field, just an X's and O's viewpoint here, they really missed Devere Posey, one of those guys who's you know had, had the suspension issue for Ohio State. Uh, but I think Miller, his athletic gifts, and, and you look back at the game against Nebraska where he really played well, turned it over, which really helped Nebraska, started that Nebraska comeback, and then Miller gets hurt later in the game. But I think his, his gifts can really frustrate defenses, not so much with his throwing ability, but his elusiveness. I think there was any chance at all that this week in Columbus, in that Ohio State locker room, last year's game here was mentioned? Yeah, don't you? You kind of at all. I think we, I think we both kind of laugh a little bit when you hear. And coaches say this all the time, including you know we've worked with coaches here said the same thing that revenge doesn't come into play. But somehow maybe they don't have to say much, but 
that score is posted. What happened? Uh, sure, if you're Ohio State, we, we saw it with basketball. The fans are going to be pretty hostile. We saw that in basketball late last year after the after the Badgers beat Ohio State here in February. So, uh, I think from the Ohio State perspective, outside of Michigan, this now Wisconsin has become the team and has become the game that fans their circle. Uh, I would be very surprised if it was anything different in terms of the atmosphere on Saturday. Well, let's face it since Alvarez started beating Ohio State, now it's become a rivalry. It has. They split the last 10 games since 1999. One of Barry Alvarez's favorite stories, the 99 game. Ohio State jumps out 17-0 in the Badgers score. The next 42 points, if Barry was up in the press box, he had had the knee problem, and he's coming down the field late in the game, and Ohio State fans are yelling at him for running up the score <laughs> in the horseshoe. It's a story he doesn't mind telling over and over. It should be great theater again on Saturday night. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching Badger Breakdown on UWBadgers.com.